CEOs uh, that call you for advice, seeking counsel on what's about to happen. And I'm curious what you think of the CEO and business community today in terms of how quiet and how silent they have been about this particular election and whether you think that they have been uh, bullied into silence, whether they're worried about being on the wrong side of which president may ultimately win. Um, you know, most CEOs claim to hate the idea of uncertainty, right? They hate uncertainty. Um, and it, you would imagine this election is going to create the mother of all uncertainty. Look, um, the New York Times published an op-ed last weekend that says that not a single Fortune 100 CEO has contributed as much as one dollar to the Republican presidential candidate. If that is true, it is a stunning statement. Now, I would hope that some enterprising journalist would go back and see just how many CEO contributions there were to Mitt Romney and Bob Dole and George W. Uh, Bush, so they know just how strong that contrast is. But that non-action is a stunning thing. I mean, we'll get to it later, I suspect. Right. People bash Harvard by pointing out that no Harvard faculty member, roughly speaking, has ever contributed to the Republican Party. And they kind of have a point, but it's kind of a much more extraordinary thing. Top 100 CEOs. So I think that speaks volumes, and it deserves to be magnified. Look, I think it's a hard problem if you run a business organization facing the possibility of the election of a highly vengeful guy as president of the United States, you know, how do you think about the fact that your voice is going to be maybe um, a little bit influential in the, in the debate, but if you're one of the more aggressive voices, your company's going to be singled out for punishment. And your first obligation is to your shareholders. So I don't know that I approve. I don't know that it's what I would do if I were a CEO. But it's not like it's that hard for me to right. understand why people are relatively quiet with respect to uh, their, uh, pub their public utterance. Are you surprised by the likes of, uh, and we're going to be having, I'm going to be talking to Peter Thiel here later. This, later. Now, he's, he, he uh, supported the, the former president last time. We'll, we'll talk to him about that. But are you surprised by the vocalness, and you're on Twitter, of an Elon Musk, or now a Bill Ackman, a longtime Democrat, who clean, seems to have switched gears, or Steve Schwartz. I mean, there, there does seem to be the, I mean, and those no, are the only I think, ones that look, are vocal. I think there's a, there are not many. There are not, yeah, and there's Chamath, and there's David Sachs. There's a, there's a number, but it's not like you could name 10. You could name seven, but it's not like you, who live in this world completely, right. can name 10. So, look, there's always, look, nature abhors a vacuum, and so do narcissists. And, um, and so there's a space to be filled where you can get a huge amount of attention commenting. So right. does it surprise me that some people who've made a lot of money in the world decide to fill that space? No, it would kind of more surprise me if nobody decided to do that. And when you've got a guy who really does, doesn't believe in the rule of law and process, but kind of believes in rewarding his friends and punishing his enemies, there's the fact that some people are going to work hard to decide to become his friends. That doesn't surprise me that much. That doesn't surprise me that much either. I think what's kind of more revealing is that there's never been any president who was so spectacularly unsuccessful in commanding the continuing loyalty of those he appointed to high office. Yeah. Think about, for example, the vice president he appointed. Think about, for example, the Secretary of State, who he appointed. Think about, for example, the Secretary of Defense, who he appointed. Think about, for example, 
the first chief of staff who he appointed. So I think what's remarkable is kind I, I so I actually read the evidence fairly differently. Those who, those with the capacity for independence, who had the most opportunity to get to know him by working for him, have almost all moved to firmly repudiate him. And that seems to me to be the more telling data than uh, the fact that you can find uh, a few tweeters who um, say good things about him.